<clears throat> so hello friends presenting the next syndrome of the week yeah this is the seventh syndrome and this time i'm not put a case scenario but tried something different by giving you guys connects by giving you few images and asking you to connect so what we see in this image is here uh, this syndrome is a triad it's a triad okay it's a triad so let's keep this in mind it's a triad of this triad of these clinical pages along with the bone marrow biopsy finding bone marrow biopsy finding okay so let's see so the first clinical feature is what we find is some amount of nail abnormality is there so, so we can see abnormality in nails so we can tell this to be nail dystrophy nail dystrophy is present okay and the second feature is we can find this white colored patches no white colored patches no this we have read it in our ent what is this this is oral leukoplakia leukoplakia okay we cannot assign any pathology to it so it's called oral leukoplakia next one is some skin changes we can find some skin changes you can find no some pigmented lesions hypopigmented and some amount of not hypopigmented hypopigmented lesions are there the hypopigmented ones are the normal skin this hypopigmented patches you can find no so these are nothing but see over here lazy reticular skin changes these are called as lazy reticular skin changes so this was the dermatological finding in this case so a triad of this along with this particular bone marrow finding this is a bone marrow biopsy showing again hypocellular marrow with fatty infiltration so there is nothing but bone marrow failure is there bone marrow failure is present okay so again as we have been doing bone marrow failure syndromes we can think of anconi we can think of storm and diamond we can think of other bone marrow failure syndromes presenting in kids being the inherited forms but bone marrow failure around, along with this triad is classical of dyskeratosis congenita dyskeratosis congenita so the triad makes up dyskeratosis congenita that is our case <coughs> that is our syndrome for the week so again doing the same table inherited pancytopenia means we can think of all these things fanconi anemia schramm and diamond dyskeratosis congenita and few very rare syndromes like congenital amegakaryocytic thrombocytopenia reticular dysgenesis and certain genetic syndromes like downs dubosis seckel nona this is a repetition of previous ones so again bone marrow failure along with their characteristic features so the characteristic features of dyskeratosis congenita was this triad okay so let's look into the syndrome in a bit detail so what is dyskeratosis congenita it is an inherited disorder affecting multiple systems multiple systems why we'll see it later characterized by mucocutaneous abnormalities so with some mucosal abnormality in terms of leukoplakia yeah? cutaneous abnormality in terms of hypopigmented lesions along with bone marrow failure we saw the bone marrow biopsy over there and predisposition to certain solid organ malignancy and mds myelodysplastic syndrome okay epidemiology usually more common in males because X. There are other inheritance also. X-linked inheritance is the most common type. That's why it involves males more, and it presents early to late childhood. It can present. Next, what is the pathogenesis? So pathogenesis is patients have short telomeres. Telomeres. What are telomeres? They are present at the end of the chromosomes, and we know that as the division takes place, the length of the telomeres keeps decreasing. So what prevents the decrease in this length? that is prevented by the enzyme called as telomerase telomerase and it is just not a single enzyme it is a telomerase enzyme complex so if there is mutation in the genes that encode for this telomerase enzyme complex so if the proteins will be mutated abnormal proteins will be produced that will lead to this so this is the enzyme complex with various genes with various genes producing its proteins as we see this is a telomerase complex and this is the <coughs> sheltin complex this is also involved in <coughs> the telomerase gene 
the protein expression and all it alters the expression of these proteins so that is the function of this complex okay so depending on the inheritance mainly x linked inheritance this being the most common if this is inherited there will be dkc one gene mutation that will lead to abnormal discarating this keratin this is the protein so if this is abnormal this is abnormal again there will be alteration in the telomerase enzyme it will lead to further pathology similarly this being the most common form this being the most common form similarly there can be autosomal recessive inheritance where there will be this set of genes abnormality and autosomal dominant inheritance wherein there will be this set of genes abnormality like telomerase reverse transcriptase and all TERC, all these things can be abnormal. So, what will happen? What will happen? There will be progressive telomere shortening. If there is progressive telomere shortening, so what can we expect? The child that is born, the kid will be very well. The kid will be doing very well in the starting, but as the child grows with age, there will be progressive telomere shortening. This will lead to certain pathologies. So, what can it cause? It can cause senescence so there will be features like gray hair then dental abnormality all these things leads to because of this then there can be genomic instability this will lead to features of hematological malignancy like fds or solid organ malignancy like any jt malignancy and all then there will be early apoptosis what will this lead to this will lead to bone marrow failure immune abnormality all those features so next let's look into the clinical features and as told it is a triad one is lacy reticular skin pigmentation and this is the most common clinical feature so this can be asked as an mcq this is the most common clinical feature lazy reticular skin pigmentation this is followed by nail dystrophy this is probably present in around 88 percent of the patients and this is followed by oral leukoplakia 78 percent of the patients so to diagnose dyskeratosis congenita along with bone marrow failure if there is any Two of these features in the triad then we can diagnose dyskeratosis content or the patient presenting with the triad itself in its early age because total bone marrow failure will occur at a later age slowly it progresses no bone marrow progresses because there is progressive shortening of the telomere so it will come around in a later age so any two of these three triads which if this triad features if it's present we can call it to be dyskeratosis congenita so yeah, initially in the in the first decade or early childhood, first decade or early childhood, the patient first presents with the child first presents with skin pigmentation and nail changes. This is followed by mucosal leukoplakia and excessive tearing, epiphoral wither from the eyes. In this later in late adolescence and by second decade, the child will end up with bone marrow failure, and next is the malignancy. So this is the course of the disease. And as told, it is a multi-system abnormality. So the clinical features are very diverse since every system can get involved. There is finding from every system possible. So this is the table for your reference. So you can read up. So the main characteristic clinical features are the part of the triad. So the dermatological feature with this along with nail dystrophy. Then there can be some amount of growth delay. Hyperhidrosis is important. Hyperhidrosis can be present. Ophthalmic, again, epiphora is present in many, most of the cases. Around 50% of the cases can have epiphora. Next, dental abnormalities also can be present in around 30 to 40% of the patients, along with leukoplakia. Then, certain ENT abnormalities, CVS, GIT, like bleeding and all, genitourinary abnormality, RS can end up with pulmonary fibrosis again because there is progressive telomere shortening. So, all these things can take place. If if a child with dyskeratosis congenital features on doing abnormalities, he will have growth delay also. It shows this characteristic finding. Hypoplasia of the cerebellum. Cerebellar hypoplasia. Then what can we think of? What can we think of? We can think of another syndrome over here. So that will land up in differential diagnosis. So there are two syndromes over here. We can either call it to be a differential diagnosis or or a close variant of dyskeratosis congenita or few textbooks also mention that it is a more severe more severe subtype more severe subtype of dyskeratosis congenita okay so one of the syndrome presents with 
cerebellar hypoplasia cerebellar hypoplasia this is the most characteristic feature along with certain other features like microcephaly developmental delay iugr immunodeficiency all these things and this is called as hoerl friderson syndrome hoerl friderson syndrome one more very close differential or a very severe subtype of dyskeratosis congenita is treves syndrome treves syndrome over here the characteristic finding is exudative retinopathy exudative retinopathy will be there along with intracranial calcification so this was the characteristic feature the most so the specific feature to diagnose this condition will be exudative retinopathy and intracranial calcification and the specific feature to diagnose hoerl hydarson syndrome will be cerebellar hypoplasia okay so these two syndromes along with the characteristic features next how do we diagnose one there can be patient can land up in pancytopenia not that initially patient lands up in pancytopenia initially there will be thrombocytopenia followed by anemia then other cell lineages will get involved so slowly the patient progresses to pancytopenia then because of pancytopenia if we do bone marrow examination since there is bone marrow failure there will be hypocellular marrow next there will be immune abnormalities again because of apoptosis and all then confirmative diagnosis is by fish okay fluorescent in situ hybridization we can find telomere shortening so this is confirmatory diagnosis next coming to complications one is hematological malignancy other one solid organ malignancy like head and neck git and few other complications will be pulmonary fibrosis gi bleed etc how do we treat one treat the bone marrow failure with androgens which will for some time like over three to four years it can increase the blood count but over a period of time the patient become resistance to androgens as well other things also has been tried like immunosuppressants erythropoietin csf all these things have been tried but then none of them have given a good result and definitive therapy as always is hematopoietic stem cell transplantation so this was it about dyskeratosis congenita hope this was useful for you guys so let's end the session thank you